Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what B Campus is, who we are currently that are involved with the B Campus Committee, um, a little bit about what's going on on campus uh, related to the work that we do, and then um, how you all can get involved and any sort of visions you have for making our Twin Cities campus a better place for pollinators. So just uh, for our agenda today, we're going to introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about who we are and what we do as part of B Campus. Um, then we will go through all of the different um, things that B Campus is doing. We'll do a little virtual tour of some of the pollinator habitat that we have on campus. And then we will do a little group discussion uh, where we'll talk about how um, we can make some changes and what actions we can take to better support pollinators on our campus. So let's get to know the B Campus Committee. My name is Elise Bernstein. I am the chair of the B Campus Committee, um, and I am also staff with the University of Minnesota B Squad um, here at the B Lab. Um, my title is Outreach Specialist, and I help out with some research here in the B Lab. Hello all, I am Elaine Evans. I am an extension educator and researcher and I am also working in the bee lab. I focus a lot on native bees and pollinator habitat and education and public involvement in collecting data. Hello, my name is Ava. I'm an undergrad and I joined recently. Um, I'm just an undergrad who likes bees, just like you guys. Hi, I'm Deb Boyd. I am with the land care department here at the university. I am the university landscape architect. I take, um, I work on some capital improvement projects, and I also work on smaller um, kind of operational projects where we have gardens and stuff to rehab. So, and I'm a, on the B campus USA committee. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Baumler. I'm a professor in the Department of Art and I'm an environmental artist. I've worked on a number of projects related to pollinators. And one that is on our campus is the Be Real, Be Everywhere project, which is a pollinator sky rise in front of the Wiseman Art Museum. I know I saw Thea just jumped on. I don't know if she's ready to introduce herself. <laughs> See, I got on just at the right time. <laughs> um, I assume we're introducing ourselves. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. I just um, just got in this this minute. My name's Thea Evans. I'm the pollinator garden coordinator at the B Lab. Um, I help maintain those gardens and do some education and outreach about pollinator gardening. And then I also coordinate the Minnesota Bee Atlas project, um, which is based in the ecology department at the U. And is a it's a participatory science project where we're studying the types of bees that nest in dead wood and plant stems. And then we also have um... Dr. Marla Spivak as part of the Bee Campus Committee. She is a professor in the Department of Entomology and a honeybee expert. Um, she's not able to join us today for this webinar, but she's also part of our committee. All right, so we're gonna switch and talk a little bit about the different things that Bee Campus does. So yeah, first, <laughs> that's me, right? Talking about the B Lab. <laughs> so first, I'll explain a little bit about um, kind of what we have going on just in the in the B Lab, um, and it connects a lot with what's going on with B Campus. So so um, realizing maybe just giving a, a, a an overview of what B Campus is. So this is a a program that's um, you know all across the country. It's run by the Xerce Society, which is an insect conservation nonprofit. And so they have a certification system for campuses to be part of this system. So, um, so that's, 
that's you know uh, something behind what the what the B campus is. Um, at the the B lab, we do a lot of work on. Um, so we have a bunch of research that we do. So we have um, research happening on honeybee health, on habitat for native bees. We also do a lot of work on the endangered rusty patch bumblebee. And then we also have a whole section of the bee lab that's involved in outreach and education. So we have um, pollinator education toolkits that we've developed to help other people um, educate about uh, the importance of pollinators and how to help them. We have a program where we work with veterans called Bee Vets. And we also have bees in prison program um, with um, mentoring incarcerated people with beekeeping as well as uh, mentoring apiary for people who are interested in learning how to keep bees. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the things that land care does to support the habitat on campus. Um, the first one is that we maintain the bee habitat GIS map that is um, linked on the um, the B campus web page that's part of the extension service and um, we developed this specifically as part of the B campus um, you know to to be to help us become a B campus USA and um, it maps out all the different areas where we have um, plantings that support habitat and also all the, there's certain trees that are um, particularly useful as ha bee habitat and those are also mapped on this map. So it's just kind of fun. You can go in and look around and see where different plantings are on campus. Um, we also, we follow the U of M's um, IPM plan, so the, um, that I think Elaine, you worked on developing that, I believe, but the integrated pets management plan. Uh, we have one full-time staff member, gardener, and he has student laborers assigned to him to work on all the campus um, natural area maintenance. Then um, we plant annual flower flower beds and pots, which are great for pollinators and they keep flowers available all season throughout all the seasons, spring, uh, summer and fall. And then I thought it would be nice to tell you that we added a quite a bit of uh, habitat this year with the uh, mostly um, capital projects that are being done. Uh, the offsite collections facility is um, being built right now, but as part of that, it had a big stormwater component. And so a, a 15,000 square foot stormwater detention basin was built, and that was seeded and planted with um, native plants, basically in flower, flowering plants and grasses. As, as well as trees and shrubs. Um, we did a little uh, area, you know, we're trying to find any place we can do kind of naturalized plantings to support the habitat. So there's a little um, plot of land that's by the, that's on the south side of animal science, just a little 2,300 square foot. We just planted it with short um, dry grasses and forbs. And then in the spring, I think we'll go in and uh, overseed it and maybe put in some other forbs. We also did a uh, bee lawn at the Comstock um, rooftop courtyard. So in the, the residence hall, there's a interior courtyard. Um, and it's very, it's difficult to get to, difficult to maintain, but we, decided that we should try and get a bee lawn established up there. Uh, it's not really used for, you know, students can go out there, but they don't very often. So 
um, that was kind of fun. And then the next slide. Um, over in St. Paul, just um, getting wrapped up is this microbial cell protection facility. And uh, it literally got seeded with like 23,000 square feet of a combination of bee lawn, native prairie, woodland edge, and vegetative swale. So that was a very big project. And as part of the capital projects, uh, there are requirements for um, like creating habitat. The state requires it. And um, I think this project met all the requirements, the B3 requirements. B3, not like buzzing bees, but buildings, benchmarks, and beyond. <laughs> and then I have one more slide, I believe. Um, this is over also on the St. Paul campus. Um, our arborist worked with the, some members of the forestry department. There was a, this dead tree that's very prominent on the corner of Gortner and Bowell. And um, the foresters at, I think it was just the foresters that were asking us to keep it and they wanted wanted to keep it for habitat. So um, I think it's pretty prominent and we have just a little interpretive sign there, but um, that's what this tree is. And on this, uh, this slide, the second picture is a close up where they actually drilled some um, cavities into the trunk, you know, so for the insects to be able to get in and and I was told that when they were working on the tree like cutting the branches off that they it was just buzzing <laughs> so that's what I have Chris do you want to share just a little bit about how the art department is involved yes so um I was actually involved directly with um, one of the members of B Lab, uh, one of the researchers, um, Colleen Satisher, and we did a project uh, which is a pollinator sky rise, which is just outside of um, the Wiseman Art Museum. And it's really a, a habitat for stem nesting bees, but also to bring attention to the fact that there are stem nesting bees. And we worked with Deb Boyd um, with and lawn care to create a kind of um, bee friendly lawn right in front of the wise men around and around the corner. So um, I would love to see the art department get more involved. I know we have, I see some people here, Alan Shalasi, who's um, working with some other art students as well, but um, that was an initial project that we did uh, through my work as an artist with the Bee Lab. All right, so now we're gonna shift gears again, talk a little bit about um, what B Campus specifically our, or our committee um, is doing. Okay, so I was going to just um, talk a little bit about what makes us a B Campus. Uh, Elaine started off on that, um, but I'll just go into it in a little more depth here. So um, what makes us a, a B Campus? Um, Again, it's an initiative of the Xerces Society for Invertebrate Con Conservation. And we're joining um, 176 other campuses throughout the country that are that have this B campus designation. Um, and we so we've made certain commitments um, as part of that, as being a, a B campus. And we've kind of summarized them here. So we we teach about the importance of bees. Um, that includes you know, offering courses um, and continuing education, um, and also service learning projects related to, to bees. And then we have uh, this research component that Elaine told you about that's um, centered at the Bee Lab and um, is really, a, and really an amazing research program. And then um, we create and maintain bee habitat and Deb showed you a, a lot of what Landcare has been doing recently on that front. That's really exciting. Um, and then, uh, and and when we're creating pollinator habitat, the focus with that is on uh, using native plants. Um, 
to support native bees and then also providing nest sites. And you saw examples of, of kind of both of those things in what Deb was showing you. And then IPM, which is integrated pest management, it really means we're just trying to reduce pesticide use on campus uh, where we can and as much as we can in order to create a healthy environment for bees. Can I advance the slide myself, Elise, or do you have to? Okay. Um, I'm just let me know when you want it want to go to the next one. Okay. <laughs> um so what's happening with B Campus now? Um uh you heard about some of the planting that's happening and the, the teaching and research. Um our committee has also been working on um, we made some educational signs that we've put up at different areas around campus that are um that have uh, plantings that are um, supporting bee habitat. And, and then we've made our, this map of pollinator habitats on campus. And then we have the IPM plan for land care. And then um, we also made a story map that highlights just a few of the pollinator habitats on campus. Um, so you can find this, it's, there's a link to this on our web, our web page which is the link up there at the top of the page. Um, and then uh, if you go to that webpage, you, there's a link that will take you to Story Maps. It's part of the ArcGIS site. And this is what our, our B Campus site looks like. Um, if you scroll down the page a little bit, you can see a map that shows the different sites that we have this, uh, in this kind of virtual tour. Um, you can go, there's uh, over on the St. Paul campus, we have the, the bee lab gardens, the horticult, yep, <laughs> right there. And you there's pictures in, in each of these, you can kind of click on there and see, see different pictures of the different gardens and natural areas. And I think if you go down a little bit further on the, on the West Bank, there's a, a picture of the sculpture that um, Chris was talking about. Um, at the Wiseman Art Museum right here. Uh, this is a really, really amazing sculpture and um, and has a, a really nice bee lawn around it. And, and then um, over on the West Bank, there are uh, a few more places. So yeah, we encourage you to just kind of check this out on your own time, explore it a little bit more and maybe um, uh, get inspired to go visit some of these places. All right, thanks, Thea. I definitely recommend checking out the Story Maps um, tour. It's really cool to see where all the pollinator habitat is across campus. Um, so we are going to talk a little bit about um, the four actions to help pollinators. This is a resource that the Bee Lab has developed. Um, there are four specific actions we like to talk about, and we want to sort of think of these um, in a way that um, we want to think about how Bee Campus, uh, our committee, can apply these four actions. So right now, you know, there's not a lot of students involved in our committee or in the actions that we're taking. So we want you all as students to think about how um, you can interpret these actions into changes we could make on our campus. Yeah, so the first action you can take is to plant flowers. Um, you can look to see which ones attract diverse pollinators and prioritize planting flowers that bloom in early spring or fall. Um, one cool thing about native plants is that if you plant the right mix, you can get like a bloom throughout the whole season from spring to fall, and that can attract different pollinators and just keep a steady flow of native plants growing. Um, also, it's important to keep plants free of pesticides, including fungicides and insecticides. Um, providing homes is another way. Um, the first home is a ground nest. Um, and in this one, dried leaves are left on the ground. Um, you can also keep bare patches of disturbed and undisturbed ground for non-defensive bees. The second type of home is a cavity nest. Um, to help this, you can leave aided stems on plants that you cut back and keep some logs or stumps. 
Um, the third one is a bumblebee nest. You can leave piles of dried grass and sticks in undisturbed areas. And the fourth is larval forage. Caterpillars need diverse plants, including native grasses and milkweeds. Our third action uh, for supporting pollinators is climate action. So climate change is harming pollinators in a lot of ways through rain shifts, um, extreme weather events, these crazy high and crazy low temperatures we're experiencing um, are all affecting different types of pollinators in different ways. Um, so taking action uh, by using clean energy sources, planting trees and grasslands, supporting sustainable agriculture, and voting by supporting environmental regulations are all ways that we can take climate action and, and fight uh, those negative impacts that climate change is having on pollinators. And then our fourth action is collecting data. Uh, so these are all programs or projects that we like to refer to as community science or participatory science. So it's data, data that's gathered by um, students and people and members of the public that aren't necessarily trained as scientists, um, but are still able to gather a lot of valuable data. Uh, so the Monarch Larva Monitoring Project is an example of this. It's run by Monarch Joint Ventures, uh, where people volunteer to count monarch eggs and count caterpillars on milkweed, and then they report what they find. Um, Bumblebee Watch and iNaturalist are two platforms uh, that are um, great for community science. You can upload photos of um, insects. So on iNaturalist, you can upload photos of insects, animals, plants, uh, things like that. Um, and when you upload those photos, um, it also geotags it so you know where that um, observation was made, what time of year it was made. Um, and there's a lot of experts that use iNaturalist that can go in and sort of verify what you saw. Bumblebee Watch is fairly similar to iNaturalist, uh, but it's just for bumblebees. So you upload a photo of a bumblebee that you saw, you record what plant you saw it on um, and where you were when you saw it. And then again, um, bumblebee experts go in and verify what species of bumblebee you found. Um, Bumblebee Watch is the platform that we use for the Minnesota Bumblebee Atlas, which is a community science project that Elaine and I are very involved in. Um, we're volunteers adopt a grid within the state of Minnesota and go out to do um, surveys of bumblebees. Um, and they've been able to gather a lot of data that's helped us understand a lot about where different species are being found within our state, um, what types of plants they're using, um, and it's helping us to track the endangered rusty patch bumblebee. So we want to get you all involved in this conversation that we're having. Um, so we want to talk about how we can implement each of these four actions to help support pollinators on our campus. And if there are any steps that you are already taking to support pollinators that fit into each of these individual categories. Um, so I think we will go into a few breakout rooms and um, each breakout room can talk a little bit about um, one of those four actions and we can share with everybody if that sounds good. All right, give me just a second to get the breakout rooms going. All right, well, I think now that we have everybody back, um, we can take a few minutes to kind of share what each group talked about, if anybody had any really awesome ideas for um, future B Campus actions, or if there's anything else anybody wants to share now, is a good time to do that. I could start talking about uh, what we talked about and Ellen and Gwenny, if you want to chime in or if I'm um, missing something, please do um, do update what I'm saying. So we started with talking about, about the climate action and um, what kind of things, things we could possibly do. And so we talked about um, you know, if it's possible to have more more trees if there's areas where we can get more trees planted also talked about um 
frequency of, of lawn mowing and you know understanding that there's places that are that are high traffic and places that people will want to keep with grass but wondering if there's options for you know there's all this turf research here where they have um turf where they have grass that doesn't need to be mown as frequently or sometimes it doesn't need to be mown at all but how does that can that i don't i don't know enough about that to know if it can deal with the high traffic stuff but wondering if if um if that can be looked into more to try to uh, reduce that uh, carbon footprint by reducing the, the frequency of, of mowing in, in areas. Um, also kind of the idea of, um, even though they're, you know, they're, when I think of lawn and the and the U, I think of the, the huge stretch between um, Northrop and, and Kaufman is kind of the classic big lawn, um, which is, you know, definitely used a lot by students. We also talked about a possibility for maybe there's some areas of it that could be that could have more um, possible habitat in there and that as, especially if there's some education around it we talked about education too in general just trying to to figure out um, think about ways to to reach out to to more students um, you know besides just the pollinator content that's in official undergraduate classes. Um, how do we how do we get pollinator education to kind of the the broader student community um, and ways to to connect with with students to um, to through through events. I don't know, Ellen. Do you want to do you want to talk about your what you were talking about with the events? idea oops you're muted still okay yes um well i actually approached um um chris uh talking to her about that because a group of students and i created a piece that's hanging in the wilson library and it's a map of the west bank and so we started out thinking about the man-made uh, impacts that we make on the environment. We're art students. We're not, we're not um, in the horticulture department. So we were more thinking about um, the whole uh, concept of what man does to the environment. And um, when this summer I attended an event at uh, in La Crosse, which was done by the Rotary Club, and it was a group of people, including the mayor and many official people, who signed a pledge. Um, through the uh, ESHRAG, and I think probably some of you know about ESHRAG. It's the Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group, and um, they have this uh, project. They have many projects, but one of the projects is called Operation Pollination. It includes a pledge and raising awareness about um, just no pollination, no food. And so um, it's a you know getting together and people from the mayor getting to better get uh, together people at the university to sign a pledge and then uh, taking it uh, and then the students could actually be involved in it by creating the advertisement and the that's what I thought the artists could do I thought the artist art students in the printing department could create um, advertisements about the event if we did it at on Earth Day or what during Earth Week during the semester. And if the teachers were participating, they could work with the students to create some kind of a project for them to do as an assignment um, to do that. And in the print and that I was thinking of like Chris, Christina Schmidt or um, in the art department who could work with the students to do that and, and there's some other other teachers that would do that too and Sean um so uh that is just one thing that we were kind of brainstorming about that's with Jackie was going to come on today I, I know she had a class or something else come up she has her work up at uh, the university um, this week and um Amy is another uh, one of the students that we, I worked with and also Bryce Mason and Ty Schwartz. And so 
But what I'm saying is we could get more students involved in those classes to create the actual and and do art to, you know, and saying, po make posters, whatever, uh, maybe even have a little exhibition in, we in the West Gallery in Regis um, for a week during Earth Week. And then also have this event. We actually were fantasizing it being on the Wiseman pollinator, you know, land, you know, that the official people could go there and they could sign this pledge. And um, they made a big deal out of it in La Crosse and the news came. So I was thinking this is a really good way to actually get not only the students educated, but the community educated and people, you know, they had several people on the news talking about pollination, et cetera, um, and from the university. And it was, it was very, uh, the, I guess, La Crosse University, but also some, the mayor and people that were in La Crosse doing, um, doing, participating. And it was one of the commissioners was participating. I think I sent you a photograph of all the people that were there. And so it was, it was a really good, piece to get people educated about pollination but it also needs to come from the students too so this just we we need to talk more about it but and i don't know I, how it would work through um your group because you you would be perfect uh collaborators to actually make make something like this happen Feedback. Cool. I think I think that that will be really a really good idea or a really good something that's really good for us to keep in mind um, in terms of events and, and actions moving forward. Um, in our group, we talk. We're talking about collecting data, and we were talking about how. It's a little bit different or difficult sometimes to um, do the sort of collecting data action for students on campus since a lot of undergrads are not on campus during the summer. Sometimes, you know, some people go back home to a different state or even just a few cities away to uh, live with their parents. Um, so something that could be a good idea is getting um, some engagement or interest in the spring and then doing some sort of data collection event in the pollinator gardens we have on campus um, in the early fall or maybe during welcome week or right around the time that people are moving in um, since there's not going to be a ton of students on campus like in July when there's lots of stuff blooming. I like that idea. Um, I mean, it's kind of it, it's kind of cool to to collect data at the tip and tail of the season too, because I think um, those are interesting times for pollinators. Mm -hmm. um, so our group was talking about providing homes for pollinators, um, and one thing we talked about was setting goals for like how much pollinator habit we want to create so like having some kind of like you know this many square feet we want to add this many square feet of pollinator habitat habitat and sort of have a way of um you know having a goal and tracking our progress towards that and then gosh we talked about like pollinator habitat that's near transit ways or bus stops and um what you know what we know and our learning about how whether that may have a negative effect on pollinators um uh we talked about like having more signs uh, around so like in addition to the ones that we already have um maybe also putting signs around in more of the smaller uh, habitat areas um just, just to sort of 
catch people's attention more and, uh, you know, as, especially areas that are in more visible areas on campus that are, or more centrally located areas on campus. Um, even if it's a small patch, you know, having a sign there might um, attract more attention. Uh, and then also doing more with art projects. Um, we have a couple really cool, you know, art projects that are related to bee nesting on campus, but they're in somewhat out of the way places on campus and like having something that was more centrally located um, could be really, really neat. And we also talked about the festival idea. Um, I think that could be really fun. And then sort of, um, we're talking about buckthorn removal as a possibility for creating habitat. Uh, Chris was talking about doing that with one of her classes and collaborating with the parks department um, to work, you know, to do buckthorn removal on places that are not necessarily right on campus, but right adjacent to campus, kind of along the river. And uh, and you can really see the difference that that um, that, that makes pretty quickly when you remove buckthorn from an area and see the native plants coming back. And uh, yeah, and involving involving classes and and the, the parks department and students in, in that kind of effort. Um, I was in the um, flower group and um, I did most of the talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, we talked a lot about how like getting uh, these naturalized areas established, you know, what it takes some effort, quite a bit of effort to, um, you know, to get them established. Um, and then we talked about possibilities of where, you know, students could have gardens on campus and mainly the way to do that would be to go through the living labs program, which is how the the two community gardens um, got established and um, you know otherwise working for land care you could get your hands dirty <laughs> and uh, and we also have a you know some internship opportunities to work with our um, you know on the naturalized areas so um, yeah Ava anything <laughs> yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Great. Um, well, I'm going to send in the chat. Here's a link to a Google form um, for all the students that are on here. If you could fill this out, that would be great, um, which is some information about, you know, who you are, how you heard about B Campus, um, what you're studying, and then um, the different ways that you're interested in getting involved. Um, I will send a follow-up email to everybody that attended and then some of the students that we have on a separate email list. Um, so if you lose this link now, I will send it out again. Um, but thank you everybody for participating today. We I've got a lot of really good ideas and a lot of things that I'm excited to talk about um, for future steps for B Campus. Great. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Great to meet you.